divine truth feedback. Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give answers to questions about love compensation, repentance, forgiveness and prayer. This feedback session was recorded on the 2nd of December 2015 in Willsdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. We've just had a short break because I needed to have a bit of a cry. It's uh, quite a bit for me to deal with in these last few questions. Yeah. Um, so, but I think it's a great lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these are pow powerful, powerful questions to, and also powerful things to understand. You know, we're talking here about some of the most powerful laws of the universe. And of course, they're going to have a lot of emotion attached to them for anybody who's sincerely listening to anything to do with these particular laws. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, should be a lot softer from here on in. Well, it doesn't might matter what should or shouldn't, does it? <laughs> might involve a few tears along the way, but exactly. that's okay. <laughs> All right. So, the next set of questions relates to mercy. Yes. You mentioned that God displays mercy towards us when he forgives us through mm. that process of repentance. Um, how can we grow our faith that God is merciful? Because a lot of people don't feel God is merciful and it makes them harder to repent, it, you know, it can get in the way of them feeling. Mm, well, the, uh, the answer is the same answer as how do we grow our faith in anything, mm -hmm. and that is by experiencing it. You have to experience it to grow your faith. So, so how do I grow my faith in God's love? By experiencing God's love. How do I grow my faith in God personally? By experiencing God's personality. How do I grow my faith in God's truth? By experiencing emotionally God's truth. How do I grow my faith in God's mercy, a quality of God? A very, very important quality for our sakes, actually. Yes. How, do I, how do I grow that faith? By experiencing personally God's mercy. Mm. That's how mm. you grow your faith in it. Now, obviously, that's difficult to do if you ha don't allow the experience. So, so this is why people who do not allow the experience emotionally do not believe in God's mercy. Mm. And you, you will believe in God's mercy once... You, for, you experience God's mercy for yourself. Yeah. And this is why it's important to experience it for yourself mm -hmm. so that your faith in God's mercy grows. But if we could just uh, refer to the quality itself of God, if you consider that we, all, all humanity who have ever lived, um, at some point or other, has done something that is out of harmony with love. In other words, we've sinned. Mm -hmm. Those sins have harmed other people in such a way that we can never repair, that we can never fix per, you know, ourselves, that we can never go back and redo it over again and rub out the experience for the person and what kind of effect it had on them. And then if you add together the sins to do with the environment, it's the same. We're like, we've done a whole heap of things to the environment that we, no matter how much effort we spend, would never repair. As I was talking to the guys yesterday about you know, I've spent, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on, on our property here trying to repair the damage that just 10 cattle have made, uh, that I've eaten, <laughs> yeah. have made to, to the property here. And, and after seven years of doing that, I still haven't really obtained a full repair of the property. Yeah. And in fact, I don't expect for the next thousand that I'd be able to do it by my own effort yes. without God's love. So We should clarify, you didn't eat the 10 cattle on this property. No, but, I, <laughs> no, but I ate, I, I've eaten more than 10 cattle of my whole life, I would yeah. assume. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, 40 acres here can only support 10 cattle. Yeah. So basically the damage that's been done to this property has been done by by meat farming yes. and, uh, and it's taken years and years and years of, of a sincere effort to bring it into any semblance of repair and still it's nowhere near repaired yes. and, and nowhere near repaired and it probably won't be for the next thousand years if I don't engage God's love. Mm -hmm. so, so if we look at what we've done to the environment, what we've done to people, what we've done to animals, we can see that actually we need God's mercy. Yeah. We, we need it so much because because there's no way that we can undo what we've done. Mm. Even with a sincere effort, we won't be able to undo what we've done by, our, by ourselves. And, and we need God to help us. And this is where 
we, this is why we need God's mercy. And once you understand that God's willing to help you repair the damage that you yourself have done, yeah. that's a very merciful person who does that. Because yeah. God, God hasn't done the damage. Yeah. God hasn't been responsible for the damage. Mm -hmm. But God's willing to assist you to repair it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that like a, the act of a, a tremendously merciful God? Mm -hmm. And no matter how serious your sin, God's love can repair it. That's, the, that's how powerful his mercy is. Yeah. It, it, he can repair anything. And, and once we understand those particular things and start to feel God's mercy in our own life operating, where God allow, you know, is merciful towards us when God could have been demanding and much more punishing, mm -hmm. then we start to experience it personally, emotionally. We start to feel the feeling of mercy from God and its power over us. And the repentance process draws God's mercy to us. So we, we feel God's mercy as a result. And, but God is even merciful towards those who are not repentant. Mm -hmm. Like God, as I said in the first century, God still makes it rain upon the wicked and the righteous. Yeah. So isn't that being merciful to the wicked? <laughs> yeah. Bearing in mind what they probably deserve? <laughs> of course it is. So, so mercy is a tremendously bene beneficent quality of God. And, and uh, once we personally experience it, then we will have faith in it. So how would you define God's mercy? Is it this reparation process that he assists in? Is it the well, it's all, all of those things. mitigation of consequences? It's not the mitigation of consequences. Yeah, this Because there, there is a reason why God, allow, God allows forgiveness to occur, and that is our repentance. Yep. So, so it's not the mitigation of consequences. But also, as I pointed out just earlier, that even there are times when you know we still get food even though we probably sometimes don't even deserve it from a law perspective and mm -hmm. um, so so obviously that demonstrates that god's even merciful to people who are not even repentant let alone people who are yeah. so so what that suggests then is that it's only the people who are repentant who will feel god's mercy of course it's mm -hmm. only people who have a relationship with god who will feel the mercy yeah. But, but obviously there's a huge extent of God's mercy and it is necessary for sending people to have God's mercy because without God's mercy, there is no way reparation can be achieved yeah. towards all the people that we've harmed. And isn't it such a wonderful thing that God, even though God has not personally harmed anyone, is willing to engage in the process of fixing the harm I've done yeah. or you've done to others? Isn't that, isn't that merciful? Isn't that just a wonderful act of love on God's part? So after a while, and, you, and after you feel that, mm. then you understand, then you start to understand the extent of God's mercy yeah. and how, how much that mercy is, is demonstrated. God has been merciful to the most wicked of people, to the most evil of people. And, uh, and once they engage repentance, it, but even, but even, even with the law of compensation, there's mercy. Yeah. In the sense that once you've paid for your sin, then there's no more penalty required of you. Mm. And and so this et whole eternal torment doctrine of the Christian faith, yeah. where a person who arrives in hell because they've done all these terrible things remains in hell for the rest of their existence, it is not what God is. Mm. God would never create such a system. And, uh, and it's interesting that humankind believe in such things, bearing in mind that if, a, if God was loving and merciful, God would never, of course, never engage in such behaviour. So, but, but obviously many humans believe that God should. Yes. <laughs> and that's a demonstration of how much we do not understand God's yeah. mercy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's incredibly generous, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next question. So can we be merciful or is this only a quality that God has? We must be merciful as God is merciful. Mm. And in fact, if you are not merciful as God is merciful, you will never become at one with God. So that's first. Mm. Secondly, if you are not merciful, you will never have a relationship with God, in fact, because you can't, because God is merciful and you not being merciful are like two opposites. You're never going to have a relationship. So if you cannot demonstrate mercy to another person, then it's impossible for you, in fact, to have a relationship with God. So yes, merciful, mercifulness 
is a quality that we must develop. It's, it's an essential quality. We have to develop it. And in fact, the whole process of forgiveness and repentance causes us to develop it. Yeah. yeah. So would you say it's a very common uh, quality displayed in people on earth at the moment? No, definitely not. And in fact, if you look at most laws of most countries, you can see that mercy is not even a part, a part mostly, yeah. of, any of, God's, any of the laws of the country. Yeah. Of, it's a large part of God's laws, because it, but, but often governed by this other law regarding the law of repentance and forgiveness. Obviously, if we can't forgive other people, then why would we expect God to forgive us? If we can't repent for what we've done, then why would we expect others to repent for what they've done towards us? Yeah. It, it makes, we're, we're, if, if we do not develop mercy, we are being hypocrites and if we expect to have a relationship with God, because yeah. we definitely will not have one yeah. without developing the quality. Mm. And, and that's why in the Bible, the Apostle Paul talked about the fruitages of the Spirit, you know, and, and and there are fruitages of, of the Holy Spirit. When, when you start connecting to God and you start receiving God's love, you start becoming more like God. And, and since mercy is, one, is a very large quality of God's love, then naturally you will also become merciful too. Mm. Mm. So any person that holds on to grudges for years and holds on to resentment for centuries, is obviously not developing that quality and therefore will stru we'll struggle to have a relationship with God. Now that's very, very different than desiring to not engage with people who are unloving towards you, which is, which is, a, which is basically just saying, no, you, you're not allowed to treat me in an unloving manner. You can still be merciful towards them without having to put up with their behaviour. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then, if more people develop this quality of mercy, mm -hmm. what good would it do to our planet and how would it help the people on Earth at the moment? Well, you think about it. If, if we all develop the quality of mercy, we would all forgive each other for what each other has done towards us. Yeah. We would all do that. So, so no war would actually ever occur under any circumstance, mm -hmm. just that development of that one quality, it would be impossible to go to war because we've already forgiven the other person for whatever they chose to do. Yeah. It would be impossible for payback situations to occur. Yeah. It would be impossible for me to damage you because you've already harmed me mm -hmm. of, because mercy would dictate that I don't do that. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a lot of things on this planet that would never occur if the quality of mercy was developed. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, and I, that doesn't mean that we're um, that we allow people to get away with murder, as the saying goes. Mm -hmm. God doesn't allow us to get away with murder, right? So we need to understand that God demands a penalty for a murder, yeah. but the penalty is tempered by the person's attitude towards the murder. Mm -hmm. If the person's attitude is one of sincere repentance then of course the person has mercy, God's mercy. Yeah. And God is still merciful towards them by feeding them and, and giving them rain and giving them sunshine and, <laughs> and all these other things that God's laws do. In other words, God still looks after the person's physical needs. Yeah. So we would not refuse to look after a person's physical needs, um, but mercy would demand that we do. But we would not, uh, of course, allow such a person to harm us while we're doing so. Yes. yes, yeah. So, so obviously you can see that there would still be place for things like prisons. Mm -hmm. Obviously they'd be done in a much different way than prisons are done today. But if you were merciful and loving, you would do things completely different to how prisons are done today. But there would still be a need for such things in order to restrict people's unloving behaviour. Mm. But, but we would always display mercy towards them. There'd be no such thing as capital punishment. Yep. There'd be no such thing as going to war because somebody killed us, so we're going to kill some people. There'd be no such thing as, oh, I'm going to, you know, you lied about me, so now I'm going to lie about you. You know, there's no, there won't be any of those things go on. There'd, most of the media would struggle <laughs> because <laughs> there's a whole heap of falsification of things. And Although I think the media would change based on the desires in the hearts of people because at the moment well, all of people these want sensation in, in, as a part of their addiction around fears and things. Yeah, but I think they? we need to be even more general than that. All of the institutions on the planet will yeah. change 
when the average person's attitude changes. Yeah. That's the only time the institutions will change. The institutions are a product of our personal attitudes. Yes. And that, those institutions include political, uh, economical institutions, religious institutions and so forth. Yeah. So all of those systems will change automatically once our own personal attitudes change. Mm. And of course those institutions are a reflection of those things. Yeah. But mercy demands that it be shown even if those people don't change. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And really, you're talking about mercy, and that would cause us to forgive mm -hmm. those who've harmed us. And what it makes me think about... Can you about see what it also causes to forgive ourselves? Yeah. As well? Yeah. If we had any mercy at all, we would forgive ourselves what we've done. Generally, a person who cannot forgive themselves struggles to forgive others. Mm. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because they're not demonstrating quality of mercy towards themselves, and so they don't understand the quality, quality. of mercy. Yeah. And yeah. so therefore they're going to struggle to demonstrate the quality of mercy towards other towards people other as well. People. Yeah. yeah. And mercy is different than letting yourself off the hook. Or letting others off the hook. Or letting others off the hook. Yes, because I, I see that where, where a person who struggles to forgive themselves might have a very bad opinion of themselves, and through that they don't necessarily have a lot of you know, desire to exact revenge on anyone else because they think, oh, I'm bad anyway, I so it anyway. I deserved it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, just when you're talking about forgiveness, mm -hmm. I was thinking about uh, even like recent global events. Uh, there's been an ongoing crisis in Syria for a long time and a lot of refugees are entering Europe from Syria. And then just a couple of weeks ago, we had this uh, <coughs> shooting in Paris where some... Islamic um, fundamentalists shot a bunch of people and and obviously in a very terrorizing set of circumstances mm. obviously if we applied that principle of mercy then all of the people affected by that um, shooting and those it was really affected the globe really it was a huge fear only through the media though yes mm. um, <coughs> triggered a lot of people's fear um, but through the, through the um, extension of mercy and forgiveness of those people, I can see that that would have a lot of benefits to everyone, not just to those people directly. Mm. For example, now where people haven't forgiven, I know that it will affect a lot of those refugees who aren't necessarily violent. I think, it, I think it's far more than what most people realise and even what you're saying. Yep. The reality is, is when we do not forgive others, we hold on to resentment and hatred. Yes. Now, resentment and hatred inside of our soul causes us, after that point, to act in very, very unloving manners. Not just to the people not who've harmed us. Not just to the people who've harmed yeah. us. And it causes us to harm others who are innocents, actually, yeah. who are innocent of, of doing anything towards us. And this is, this is the general cycle that occurs after these kind of events where the entire Islamic nations are mm -hmm. blamed mm -hmm. for what are just Islamic fundamentalists who well, are even obvious, extremists, or we extremists. Call them, not fundamentalists. Well, yeah. even the fundamentalists and extremists, both fundamentalists and extremists have unloving behaviours and attitudes yeah. that, are gov that are not governed in harmony with the laws of God yeah. and are not ha in harmony with the laws of love. And, and there are just as many Christian fundamentalists and extremists as there are Islam Islamic fundamentalists and extremists and any other religious faith for mm -hmm. that matter, probably except for the Buddhist faith perhaps <laughs> and a few other faiths like that, Baha'i yeah. faith that, and Jehovah's Witnesses and other faiths like that that practice uh, no, uh, glo you know, no war and, yeah. and, and pacifism. Passive. But but the reality is the majority don't, and the majority let the resentment and feelings of resentment and hatred build up inside of their soul, and then they act out of harmony with those, with that, well, out of harmony with love by yeah. acting in harmony with that resentment, and they cause all sorts of damage to innocent people as a result, including their own children, their own families, their own husbands, their own wives, their own community, and also their own attitudes towards other nationalities and nations and people who are actually innocent. Yeah. And, and this is a cycle that occurs because they couldn't forgive, they couldn't work through the emotions of the original event. Yeah. They refused to work through the emotions of the original event, in fact. And so this, is, this demonstrates some of the importance of true forgiveness 
once you work through the emotions of the original event, you would not carry those emotions with you into these other situations. You would not have hatred in your heart. You would not have resentment in your heart. And therefore, you would not act in harmony with that hatred and resentment mm. that is built up in your heart. Mm. So yes, forgiveness not only helps other people, but it greatly helps yourself. Because, because once, when you do not forgive, you will definitely act out of harmony with love and that action will obviously definitely harm your own soul as a result. Mm -hmm. so, so actually forgiving other people, once you realise that you also realise that forgiving other people has a benefit, beneficial effect on your own soul condition, let alone the soul condition of others. Yeah, mm. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so how can God's actual attitude or feeling of mercy for all of us be shown on earth and known and recognized and displayed is there a way that that can happen well no god's feelings are god's feelings they <laughs> come from god so so the reality is unless you can feel god's feelings then you won't feel them <laughs> so so i can't express and you cannot express god's feelings for god yeah. you know god has all of god's own feelings so, and that applies to love, mercy, and all other feelings that God has. So we can't, we can't expect to uh, give God's feelings to other people for mm -hmm. a start. Mm -hmm. We can become in harmony with God and God's feelings and then demonstrate our own feelings. So once we become at one with God, for example, and we demonstrate true mercy to other people, then other people will feel perhaps a little touch of what yeah. God's mercy feels like. Yeah. And that may open them to feeling God's feelings of mercy as a result. Mm -hmm. So there are certainly many things we can do to open our own personal hearts to God's feelings. Because once God's feelings enter us, and once in particular God's love enters us, our feelings will begin to mirror God's feelings mm -hmm. about certain particular subjects. And that will open the hearts of other people as a result. Yeah. So we can certainly do a lot in that regard, but we can't transmit God's feelings to humanity. Mm -hmm. Only God can do that. And God is already doing that or attempting to do that. But most of humanity is completely blocked to receiving them, just as most humanity is completely blocked to receiving the emotions of each other as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, unless yeah. those emotions are generally negative or addictive. Yeah. Yeah. So, so unless we open up to pure emotions expressed and we personally become a pure expression of emotion, it's highly unlikely we'll experience God's pure expressions of emotions for us. Mm -hmm. and, and we cannot transmit God's pure emotional expression to another person. God does that directly. All we can do is open up the pathways in that person, person by sharing truth and helping them through the process of emotional openness so that they can become aware that they can do that with God directly. Mm. Yeah. We, we are... We, we can only be an ambassador for God, if you like, <laughs> by ourselves firstly becoming at one or becoming close to God. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And even then, we are never going to be able to express God's emotions for mm -hmm. another person. Mm -hmm. God does that already. Yeah. Yeah. And if the person isn't feeling God's emotions already, then that's because the person themselves doesn't want to feel it. Because any person who wants to feel God's emotions will feel God's emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Next question. Mm -hmm. What can I do to desire to repent for being self-punishing, which ultimately stops God from being able to be involved in my life? Yes. Well, the first thing we need to recognize is that being self-punishment, uh, engaging in self-punishment and self-condemnation and, you know, self-anger and so forth, all of these particular actions, if they were pushed towards another person other than themselves, we could clearly see that we're out of harmony with love. Now, from God's perspective, everybody is equal. So that means that if we develop these feelings and have them towards ourselves, then we're also out of harmony with love. Now, we've also already said that any time we're out of harmony with love, we're sinning. And when we're sinning and we do not have an awakening to our sin, God's love cannot flow. Mm. So if we are personally involved in self-punishment, we are blocking our awakening to the truth. And the awakening to the truth that we need to have is that God feels that we should not be doing these things. 
yeah. <laughs> and and God knows that such things are very self-destructive and not only to ourselves destructive, uh, destructive to others too, because it's very rare that we har don't don't when we harm ourselves that we're not also at point at times harming others. Mm. So that's the reason why God wants us to stop these kind of behaviours. Also, from God's perspective, we are the crowning of God's creation. We, we don't deserve to be punished all the time when there is an alternative, and that is that we repent for what we've done rather than punishing ourselves for what we've done. Usually when we punish ourselves for what we've done, we continue doing what we've done. Mm. And that's an unfortunate thing because, because it, it causes us to develop further more and more resentment and hatred towards ourselves and that causes us to act on that hatred and resentment towards ourselves which causes us to further sin and then of course tem in the temptation becomes that we damage other people as well as ourselves in that process so so the way to stop that of is quite obvious we need to accept god's truth about the matter we need to and develop a, a desire to feel why we want to punish ourselves because obviously we have a reason for doing so that is out of harmony with God's truth. Mm. It's out of harmony with God's love. It's a sin and we need to stop doing it. Just like punishing another person is a sin as well. And both sins are equal in God's eyes. Mm. If I punished you, that's just as bad to God as if I punished myself in exactly the same manner. Right? So I need to come to recognize that. And I need to see the sin involved because I'm still punishing one of God's children, <laughs> even though it is myself. And so the, the process of repentance will be just as um, I need involved to repent for punishing as myself, if, yes. <laughs> if I harm myself, so, as much as if I harm you, I, the repentance process yes. is equal, really. Yes, and one of the things that we'll need to talk about with people is the fact that there is no real such thing as forgiveness of oneself. Mm -hmm. There is a repentance for treating oneself badly. Yeah. It's, a, it's actually a repentance process we go through, not a forgiveness process we go through there. Mm. We, 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 when we repent for treating ourselves badly, the cause of treating ourselves badly is exposed. Yeah. And once the cause is exposed, we no longer do it. So, so once the cause is exposed... Once the cause is exposed and felt, uh -huh. um, then we no longer will punish ourselves for mm. what... what was the reason we punished ourselves before yeah and yeah 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 so we, we will we will instead um desire to do things god's way which is not to punish ourselves Co punishment of self is actually very self-absorbed action and quite selfish action we become so self-absorbed that we don't even really see or feel what other what's going on for other people mm -hmm. and and this is one of the one reason of many as to why god views it as a sin mm. um and once we come to realize the particular sin of self-punishment, then we will attempt to find the reason why we do it. It's obviously based on shame or guilt or feeling that we cannot be forgiven or some other kind of feeling that we need to feel. And once we are prepared to feel that particular emotion, then obviously we will ask for God's forgiveness. In other words, we'll repent for our own treatment of ourselves yeah. and we will ask for God's forgiveness and we'll receive it. Yeah. And God in that process can remove from us the reason why we do it. Mm. Yeah. But mm. we, need, we need to um, feel about the reason why we do it and feel the feeling of the reason, otherwise that process won't even begin. Yeah. Mm. Yep. We'll just hold fast to personal resentment, resentment of ourselves, yep. resentment of you know, who we are, what we are, and, and resentment of ourselves is just as damaging uh, to the, ourselves and others as resentment of, from ourselves towards another. It's funny, isn't it? Because as you said, in self-punishment, it's very self-involved. and yeah. You don't see you the don't damage you're doing. See, you don't think that you're hurting anyone else. Well, you know, let's look at some ways that you are hurting somebody else. Nobody who gives you any love will have the satisfaction of you receiving it because you will not receive it mm. when you punish yourself. So, so you are blocking the reception of love from every person. Now, they will feel that. They will feel that as a personal rejection of their love. Right. So, so it's it's a negative emotion, yeah. right? That you are actually causing other people to feel by rejecting their love, right? Now, most people on earth, once their love is rejected, they also begin to feel because of their injuries, they begin to feel that they are being rejected, mm. and then they'll act in harmony with that rejection, yeah. which will then so so your own resentment of yourself can trigger people into taking actions because of their own emotional injuries that they otherwise would not have taken if you had accepted their love. Yeah. 
So you can see that, yes, you know, obviously resentment of self does have an effect on other people and can, in fact, severely impact upon other people's lives mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. in a negative way. Mm. 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 You, yeah. We often think that we, it's not. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. But the opposite is the case. Yeah, often the, the false belief is actually I'm harming people less. I'm only by harming doing myself this. is the idea. Or that I, this, is, this is the right thing for me to do. And in fact, if I do anything else, I'd be harming people. A yeah. lot of us feel that from childhood, don't, yes. don't we? Yes, and it's yeah. not true. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah. harming yourself from God's perspective is just as bad as you harming another. Yeah. From God's, in God's eyes, you're equal to another. <laughs> So the harm of yourself and the harm of another is identical. Mm. That's why suicide is the same as a murder. Yeah. It's a harm of, of one of God's children. Mm. So um, the question about growing the desire to repent for, for self-punishing, you mentioned it's important to feel emotionally the reasons why the desire exists to self-punish. Because you won't, unless you feel the desire, you will not stop it. Mm -hmm. You won't. And then, of course, you can pray for God's assistance to show you what the motion is. As we discussed yesterday, you can yeah. pray for God's assistance to show you anything. Yeah, yeah. And if you're open to seeing it, God will show you straight away. Yeah. So God will be able to show you straight away why you do it if you really want to know. Yeah. But while you're angry and resentful, often we don't want to know. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to need to allow the feelings of anger and resentment first yeah. until, we reckon, you know, until we get a desire to know. Tonight. And to see the sin of what we're doing. Yeah. Once we see the sin, we have an awakening to the sin of what we're doing, then we can enter the process of repentance with God for what we're doing to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Just like we can do it when we recognise what we've done to other people. Yeah. yeah. So, so person, this has been a hard process for me because yeah. I've allowed other people to do a lot of things towards me that um, I, I, I really struggle. You know, I just uh, continually allowed it, allowed it, allowed yeah. it for years and years and years. And it's only recently, really, the last few years that I've stopped allowing people doing things towards me. And, and partly it was because I felt I deserved it. Mm. And, and so you have to work your way through that and see that as a sin, feeling that you deserve un unloving treatment is a sin. <coughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Whether that unloving treatment comes from another or from yourself. Or from yourself. Yeah. So it was rare for me to treat myself badly, but... But, but I would accept others. the bad treatment of, of others yeah. towards myself, yeah. Yeah. which is a sin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for which I need to repent. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. part of the repentance process is not doing it anymore. Yes, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And for people who are caught in this issue of continually allowing bad treatment to them, towards themselves or continually treating themselves bad, who've started to try and see God's truth about the issue, but they're still grappling. <coughs> Obviously, they're skipping over this really important po point that you said about the feeling of the why, feeling yeah. the desire to do it, really. Yeah, and feeling it. the... See, normally we punish other people because we're angry with other people. Mm -hmm. And there's a, usually a reason why we're angry with other people, you know, that... Uh, even if it might be quite obscure, there's usually a reason. And the same applies to any punishment of ourselves. We don't just do it automatically. There's a, an, an internal reason why we do it. Sometimes it can be to avoid terror, like to avoid the terror of uh, someone else attacking me. I decide to attack myself. It could mm -hmm. be that as the motivation. Uh, it can be that you feel you've done things so bad that you can't be forgiven. Yeah. Or you feel you've done things that are so bad that you should punish yourself for the rest of your life. Mm. No, none of these things are true from God's perspective, of course, but, but they are things that we need to repent for. Yeah. Um, and, and we need to come to see the truth. Yeah. And the truth is that none of these things are a good reason for us to be unloving to ourselves. Yeah. Just like none of those same things are a good reason for us to be unloving to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And we would come to recognise that. Yeah. Mm. Great. Mm. Great. Okay. Now a couple of examples. Okay. Yeah. And this one's about the relationship between forgiveness and repentance. So say a guy who's treated women badly most of his life mm -hmm. realizes the treatment he has engaged in and starts to feel the sin of his actions mm -hmm. and the harm he has done to women. And he now begins to feel the effects of the law 
on his sin and become repentant. Mm -hmm. As he engages repentance for all that he has caused and asks for God's help, mm -hmm. and God is able to take away the cause of the sin, mm -hmm. does he become aware of that cause? So in other words, does this mean he's now able to engage forgiveness, say of his mother, from whom the original cause came from? Yeah, this question is about um, when do we recognise the truth about something? Yeah. Well, the awakening process, which actually occurs before repentance begins, is a part of the recognition of truth. Mm -hmm. We must awaken to sin before we can be repentant for it. Yep. So the awakening process must be, be, be first. Mm -hmm. Now, what normally happens in the process of awakening is that it's gradual. We have an awakening to a part of it. We feel sorry for that part of it. We repent for that part of it. And mm -hmm. we feel some forgiveness for that part of it from God, but we've still not awakened to the other parts of it where it's, right. where it's harmed others or harmed ourselves or so forth. And so we then go through, so it's a process that takes usually quite a number of months or even years because, because and so therefore cannot be instant. And in fact, in the Paget message, I said quite clearly, and so did others, that the process cannot be instant because of this fact. Mm -hmm. It's not an instant process because it requires the awakening to occur first. Mm -hmm. And the awakening often occurs gradually. So when you awaken to something, you then become repentant for that thing. Usually initially you might awaken to it, you might be angry and denial. Then you awaken to it, you're no longer angry and denial. You, you now work through some grief. You're sorry that you did it. You ask God for forgiveness. You ask God to help the people that you harmed mm -hmm. and so forth. And this is a part of the forgiveness process for that particular thing that you've awakened to. But that doesn't mean you know everything about it. At it's that a point. part of the repentance process, did you say? Or part of, you said a part of the forgiveness process. It's a part of the process of you being forgiven by God. I see. Yeah. For everything that you've done uh, to others. Mm -hmm. but, but you don't know all the extent of what you've done. Mm -hmm. You don't. And so you, as you receive a bit more of God's love, that exposes to you, ah, oh, it's worse than I thought. <laughs> Unfortunately, all sin yeah. is much worse. I've experienced that, And this yeah. is something to realise for everyone. All sin is much worse than you thought. <laughs> it's normal, right? Yeah. But you, you go through the first part of the awakening and you, you, you think, oh, that's the end of it, <laughs> usually. <laughs> and then you realise, oh, no, it's not the end of it. It's <laughs> just the beginning of it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, just, yeah. I'll just have another realisation. And, and these realisations and the process of repentance for each realisation can happen quite rapidly mm -hmm. if you're very humble. Mm -hmm. But they'll happen very slowly if you're not. So. Mm. I think also this questioner is, is honing in on, look, I realise I've been bad to women. I want to repent for that, but I don't know the core, what's the cause and the thing I need to forgive, say, with my mother. And through this process of repentance, do I end up finding that and forgiving my mother? No, see, if you're truly repentant, which requires an awakening to the enormity of the sin, mm -hmm. right? So this can't happen unless there's an awakening to the enormity of the sin. Mm -hmm. If you're truly repentant, then God can reach in and take out the cause. The reason why so you, you chose to do what you did. You might not know what that cause is. Oh, you'll know after it's taken, while it's getting taken while out. While it's getting taken out. You'll know then. You won't know before then. In fact, many of you will attempt to guess and you'll have no idea. Yep. And, you, and you'll realise at the end of it, oh, it was no, no, nothing like what I thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But that God can only reach into the extent that we've had the awakening. Yeah. And to the extent that we're sorry for the thing that we've awakened to. So... So God can't reach in and take the whole thing out unless we're willing to see the enormity of the whole thing, which makes sense, right? It makes sense. So does this mean, if, say, in this person's example, mm -hmm. okay, I feel like I've harmed women in this way. Oh, I've had an awakening to the sin. I, I, I feel really... I'm no longer engaging it. I'm no longer engaged. I want to stop it. Um, and I'm no longer doing it by, by, will, by force of will. Yep, right? yep. And my desire is cease sin. Yeah, but I, I can feel that there's a motivation to do it inside of me still. Yep. I want to repent. Yes. I feel terribly. I, I go to God emotionally, feel, you know, I, and, and engage this repentance process with God. Part of the cause is removed from this person 
to the extent, to the extent of the that awakening. So in that process, they will have they will have an additional awakening to some injury that they were avoiding mm -hmm. in in taking then the action. They'll repent for that. They'll they'll repent they'll for that. They'll repent for that. And, and then a bit more can be taken out. And, and this then a bit more, and, and then a bit more, and so forth. So in if this person's talking about their relationship with their mother, which they feel clueless about, for example, um, and they want to engage forgiveness with their mum, mm -hmm. um, it will be a, you're saying it's a gradual process of awakening to the sin, so it'll also be a gradual process of awakening to the cause and the true damage, that, damage done. Uh, that exists within the relationship with the mother. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. That mother has done to them, yeah. Yeah. Or they've done to mother because at the end of the day, you can do things, you know, if yeah. mum treated herself as unworthy, she did damage to you by treating you as, as more, you know, superior to her. So that's her damage to you. But in your superiority over her, you would have then done damage to her. Yeah. You would have said, oh, you know, belittled her and ridiculed her and so forth. And that's your sin. Yeah. So it just depends on, you know, the relationship and what was happened. Yeah. If, if your mother felt herself to be superior to you, then it would be completely different. Yeah. yeah. And she trained you to become inferior. And it's completely different when you train a child to become inferior or you train a child to become superior. You're part of their superiority problem. You're part of the, the injuries that they engage as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So, so that's part of the process that mum would have to work her way through. Yeah. You know, if 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 son runs off and ch cheats on every woman he ever comes across, right? That's probably because mum treated him like he's superior. Yeah. Right. And then mum is partly to blame for that behaviour. Yeah. Because she actually created that superiority complex inside of the son. Mm-hmm. So, so she, God attributes some of that blame and some of the penalty of his actions towards her. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the son who, um, who now has an awareness of all these damaging things he did to women would also begin perhaps to have an awareness that actually it wasn't because he was necessarily damaged by his mother, treated mm -hmm. badly by his mother. He's, his mother could have treated him like he was superior to women. Yeah. And that was what caused him to take these actions. To take the actions. Does that make sense? It makes totally sense. Or his sense. father might have caused him to believe he's superior to women, and that's why he took these actions. Yeah. So he would then have to work his way through that, uh, you know, forgiving his mother for creating his own sense of superiority. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so this questioner, I think, is also getting at the fact that if he just engages repentance, or I wouldn't have to... If anyone just engages repentance, mm -hmm. then this process of forgiveness almost gets taken care of in the process. Of or course. It, it's it, automatic. Yes. If we're repentant, forgiveness is automatic. Yeah. We will feel God's forgiveness and we'll feel God's mercy. We'll feel God's love enter us. We'll feel the causes being removed. We'll know what the causes are when they're removed yeah. uh, or as they're being removed. Yeah. But not before then. Our forgiveness, so God's forgiveness of us and our forgiveness of others is all taken care of? Is, this uh, is what I was Not sorry, necessarily our forgiveness of others, no. I didn't say that. That's, that's what... Um, our forgiveness of others is very dependent upon our choice to forgive others. Yeah. So, you know, of course that means that I'm going to have to engage that choice. I could refuse to engage that choice, which is a sin. Yeah. And, uh, and I might have to work through a lot of things there before I receive more of God's love on that particular subject. Yeah. You will receive God's love to the, in proportion to the amount of awareness and desire, the amount of awareness you've developed of the sin yeah. and the desire to be repentant for it yes. or the desire to forgive another for it. Yeah. So, so forgiving another person means that you have to develop an awareness, an awakening towards what they've actually done. <laughs> yes. And as you engage the process of repentance sincerely, though, you will gain that awareness. Not necessarily, because you done. might have been injured in ways that you haven't injured others. So awareness isn't guaranteed just because you're, you, you go through repentance. You may, so, you may have injuries that after you've re repented for everything you've done, you still may have a lot of injuries where you're completely in refusal of seeing where other people have harmed you because you don't want to feel the pain of, their, of that relationship. You may, for example, you know, this is what happens often with mothers. You, many people on the planet do not want to feel how much their mothers have actually hated them mm -hmm. and, and why their mothers have done many of the things they've done. And the same applies to fathers, of course. Mm -hmm. And so they deny that. So they may, have, they may have gone through repentance about what they've done towards other people, but they've been completely refused 
to go through forgiveness of what other people have done to them because they don't want to have the awakening to the sin mm -hmm. that other, people's have, other people have actually committed towards them. Mm -hmm. so, so it requires both. It requires, and the awarenesses of one don't automatically translate to the awarenesses of the other. So this person's question, the answer is actually no. This person saying, as he engages repentance for all that he has caused and asks for God's help, mm -hmm. and God is able to take away the cause of the sin. Well, no, the does, answer to that is yes. See, see right. the, the, the question is uh, saying that God is taking away the cause of the sin. Yes, and, and in other saying, words, this person has been repentant to the extent that God's starting to take away the cause. Yes. As soon as God st takes away the cause, what will be exposed is what Mother did to him. Right. That will be exposed. <laughs> now you. that has to go through the same process. Yes. Then he must engage the process of forgiveness. Now being aware of the cause. Correct. Yes. And, and this question, which is another saying, process again. Yes, I get you. Does that totally. Make sense? Totally. It's not that process. No. Because, it, because that requires him going through the process of having an awakening to the other person's sin towards himself. Yeah. Feeling what that other person's sin felt like, the damage that it's done. Definitely. And then asking God to forgive the other person. Yes. And also take from within them himself the, the effect of what the other person did. Absolutely. That's right. I agree. So it's a different I, process. Uh, yes, but when you said forgiveness is automatic, I think you were referring to God's forgiveness. God's of forgiveness. Him um, that's what I was saying. We got our wires God, crossed yes. around forgiveness. God's is there. forgiveness it, is automatic. Yes. Whether you feel it or not, it will be dependent upon whether your heart is open to repentance. Yes, so you go into the process of repentance. Mm -hmm. If you're sincere and open, you will feel God's forgiveness. Of you. Of you. You will feel the causes of why you took these actions. Correct, which are but, all related to probably what other people have done to you, but not always. Uh-huh. Because they're also related to choices you have made. Yep. <laughs> and then you have the choice then to forgive either yourself or others with regards to those causes. And you will firstly have to go through a period of awareness or awakening to the sin that others have caused towards you uh -huh. before you will forgive them. You can't forgive something you don't know, just like you can't repent for something you don't believe. Yeah. But in that process, if you've been made aware, you've had an awakening, is that correct? No, you've, had, you've developed an awareness. There's a feeling-based awareness of something's wrong here now. I can feel there's something wrong here now. Because there's a differential now between what your soul will allow from others because of God's love taking away something from you. Yeah. There's now a differential between what God's love will allow you to believe anymore. So you'll no longer believe your mum was loving when she wasn't. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that doesn't mean you now will, will allow yourself to have an awakening to it. Mm-hmm. You know, to have an awakening to it, there's got to be some conscious process of seeing where mum wasn't where, where mum wasn't loving, when you believed up until that point she was. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So you're getting all technical now anyway. Yeah, let's leave it alone. No, 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 you're getting technical. And that's because you're not going through the process. People who get technical about these issues haven't gone through the process. Mm -hmm. It's a very easy process to understand if you go through the process, right? People who don't go through the process get all technical about it all the time. Mm. And this is what I notice a lot of people do. They get all technical before they go through the process. And you know why we do that? Because we don't want to go through the process. We're afraid of the process. That's why we don't do it. And my suggestion is go through the process. <laughs> then you'll experience what I'm saying. You, you'll, this, this will be the sequence of events. You'll have an awakening to how you've sinned against somebody else. You'll have an awakening to the enormity of the sin. You'll feel contrite. You'll feel destroyed by the fact that, of what you did, mm -hmm. right? You'll take that to God and ask for God's forgiveness. God will forgive you. In the process of God forgiving you, God will take out the reason why you did it from you. He will start to remove it. He can only remove how much you were aware of or had an awakening to. Mm -hmm. But even if he removes that, now there's a differential between what you would do normally and what you now feel like you must do. Yeah that then will cause you to realize a whole set of new things. Some of those new things will be how other people have sinned against you. Mm -hmm. You will then need to go through an awakening to the sin, mm -hmm. seeing its damage and asking God to forgive that person. In the process of asking God to forgive that person, God takes out some more of the reasons why you couldn't forgive them beforehand. Yes. 
And this is a cyclic process that will continue yeah. until you become at one with God. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Now, you can get all complex and technical about it, or you can just do it. <laughs> yeah, and actually, <laughs> and I, I feel, feel it's... Doing it is more important. It's also... It's not even... I feel it's not getting complicated. It's trying to oversimplify it. I feel the question is sort of trying to simplify it down into A plus B. Yeah, but why do we want to do that? We want to do that because we want to just have one little realisation and our whole life changes and it's all over with hardly any pain. I agree. No sin causes pain and suffering. You, You cannot get away with pain and suffering that easily, right? You can't because sin causes it. This is when you start to realise the enormity of sin. It, it's a terrible creator of pain and suffering. Like huge amounts of pain and suffering are the result of our sin. Now, if we can't see the correlation, in, and if God just wiped away things without us even needing to have any realization of anything mm-hmm. or any awakening to anything, then we would just go willy nilly sinning, <laughs> as the saying goes, you know, sinning here, sinning there, because later on God will forgive me and I'll get away with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the reality is, under those circumstances, we wouldn't see the enormity and the damage and the fact that all this damage is irreversible without God. We would mm. never see any of those things. Mm. So this is why it cannot be an instantaneous process. Mm. But almost everybody who asks me questions about the process wants it to be an instantaneous process. Mm. And why do they want that? Because they don't want to go through the pain and suffering. Right. To feel the enormity of the what feel the enormity actually, of what's actually happened, yeah. and how bad it is, and how bad, damaging it's been. Mm-hmm. They don't want to have that feeling. Mm-hmm. That feeling is a key feeling for your progress, but most people don't want to have it. Yeah, they don't want to have the feeling, and so they ask all of these questions in order to avoid the feeling, uh-huh. which is actually not repentance at all. Yeah. And you're going to be ground into submission <laughs> through the law of conversation when you do that. Yeah. So, so this is where I feel people get really stuck. They ask all these questions, keep on asking question after question after question because they don't want to engage the process mm-hmm. or they want the process to be over before it's even begun. Mm-hmm. And if you want that, you're never going to do this. Mm. And your law of compensation is the law you're going to be governed by. Yeah. And so my suggestion to people is to stop this process of questioning, 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 because you just don't want to go ahead and do it or you want it to be over. Recognise that wanting it to be over before you've paid the penalty is actually a sin. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's actually another sin. If you, it's, like, it's like me me harming you and then wanting, it, wanting you to stop crying because, of, because it makes yep. me feel bad. Yep. That's a bigger sin. That's another sin. Yeah. Like it's like, a, it's like a parent belting a child and then saying, don't cry. Yeah. Now, that's another sin. Like, and, and this is what we're often doing even with ourselves. We're basically trying to come to awareness without having the emotion. Yeah. No, the way God works is you're going to have to have the emotion. <laughs> that's why the process is going to be painful. Once you recognise how painful the process is, you will start to desire to not sin anymore. <laughs> You'll go, hang on a sec. Sin always causes pain. <laughs> Sin always, yeah. I'm all, you know, this is my feelings right now, these painful feelings that I'm having are the result of my sin. Yeah. And, and as a result of that, you will have a much stronger desire to not sin. Mm. And you'll have a much stronger desire to repent for your sin. And you'll have a much stronger desire to have an awakening to your sin, which is a great thing. Yeah. That's what God created. But the awakening to sin is gradual in nature because most of the time, and, and the hardest sins to recognise are the sins that we don't believe are sins. Yeah. They're the hardest sins to deal with because we don't believe they are sins. We mm-hmm. believe we did the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know? So the average person, and I can give some examples there, like the average person who, uh, for example, who self- sacrifices themselves doesn't think they're committing a sin. The average person who doesn't tell the truth to another person when it's asked for or does not share the truth at all, even if it's not asked for, yeah. doesn't think they are committing a sin. Mm. The average person thinks that withholding truth or not saying anything is better than saying the truth. Mm. That's a sin. Yeah, <laughs> and I think we talked about this recently. I think it was on camera. But this, um, we talked to RJ Lees in the spirit world some time ago. and. Yep. And one of the big remarks that he had was that 
a lot of the things he did day to day, and I'm paraphrasing here, but a lot of the things he did day to day that he didn't think were such sins. big sins. Yes, like or, treating his wife badly, for example. It, yeah, <laughs> um, were, he found the biggest things that governed where he was in the spirit world. Because and he hadn't had an awakening to them. Had no awakening to them. and. Mm. Yet he he felt there was other things he was aware of and that he thought he needed to repent for, which when it all came down to it, didn't have such minor. a large impact. Because yes. he'd already repented, you see. Yes. Part of the because he'd already had an awakening that that was a sin. Yes. So, yeah. this is the thing: it's the sins you know of that actually are quite minor compared to the sins you don't know of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's the sins you don't know of that are going to be the most difficult things for you to deal with. Mm. Which is why it's such a gift to have a person tell us truth, such as yourself, you know, just point out all of these ways that we are sinning to because it gives the us the opportunity to have that awakening, yeah. that emotional awakening. Yes. The, the irony of the awakening process is b before the awakening occurs, we're in complete denial that it's even a sin. Mm -hmm. We actually believe, in most cases, we believe we did the right thing. Yeah. So, so for example, the average Christian in history who went to war with the Islamic faith, went on a holy crusade, mm -hmm. believed he was doing the right thing. And in that process of belief, he murdered hundreds of people, right? He arrives in the hells still believing he did the right thing, yeah. still believing he did it for God, right? And, and that is very, very difficult for him to come to terms with because he doesn't even think it's a sin. Yeah. The average Christian on this planet today gets involved in sins that are quite complex because they often are very uh, overbearing and, and, and pushy with other people. They're trying to force their faith on other people all the time. These are sins mm -hmm. and, and they don't realize they're committing them. They believe they're doing the right thing for God. Yeah. Right? They believe that attacking a person who aborted a child is actually doing something for God. Yeah. Or they're attacking a, the abortion clinic is doing something for God. Mm. So just like people in the Islamic think, faith think attacking a Christian for a purpose yeah. is doing something for God. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry, these are sins. Yeah. And it's those kind of sins that are the most difficult to face. It's the kind of sin that you don't even know that you're treating your wife or husband badly when you are. Yeah. You don't even know when you're treating your children badly when you are. Mm -hmm. These kind of sins are the most difficult to face because you have yet to have an awakening. Mm -hmm. And the awakening process is going to be difficult because you believe yourself to be right. Yeah. Right. And that's why it takes time, because there's all these issues that you believe yourself to be right on and you're not right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I find it's really interesting as well. You, you mentioned earlier, you know, how everyone wants to get to the nuts and bolts of it all and figure it all out before we even start engaging it. Yeah, and, and, we, and we have an emotional reason for doing that. And it's, and it's quite simple. We want to avoid the process. Yes. <laughs> that's all it is. Well, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> and that, that um, actually when we start to have these awakenings, it, it's not a foreign pathway to go down to start this repentance process. It's just that so many of us are trying to control our emotional experience yes. that we then hear new concepts and we think, I've got to sort this out before I even Before I even engage start. it. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because we don't want to be overwhelmed emotionally. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. We don't want to face the truth. Yeah. We don't want to feel how terrible it yeah. really is that we did what we did. Yeah. We don't want to feel those things. Yeah. It's because you don't want to feel things that causes you to not have an awakening. And it's also because uh, the same reason as to why you don't want to be repentant. Yeah. And it's also the same reason to why you don't want to forgive. Yeah. So, so you can see that the awakening process, the law of compensation brings us to the awakening, but we could get there a lot quicker as we talked last uh, about this mm -hmm. yesterday, we could get there by just asking God, tell me the things, all the things that I've done wrong. Yes. Show me what they are. Yeah. We could ask God to show me all the things wrong that I've done wrong to myself, all the things I've done wrong to others, all the things I've done wrong to the environment, all the things I've done wrong to the, you know, to, to the creatures in the environment. We could ask God all of those things. We're going to be overwhelmed with information, of course. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's the way it goes because we have sinned yeah, every yeah. day in many different ways. Yeah. And, and we could then go through the process of awakening to it and then repenting for it and then being forgiven and so forth. But, but obviously 
we're not going to do that if we have no awareness that we've done anything wrong. Yeah. And we're not going to do that if we believe what we're doing is actually right when it's wrong. Or, as you say, we're trying to sort these things out before we even... We want an ordered way that it's going to work before we even begin, which is not very humble, is it? We're, we're trying to say, look, yeah, OK, like, I'll like, find this out and then I'll know the causes and then I'll be able to repent and forgive. And doing all that is also a sin. Yeah. It's, a, it's also a sin because, because we're trying to do it for a reason. Yeah. And the reason is we're trying to avoid an emotion. Yeah. And avoiding emotions is sin. Yeah. From God's perspective, you're sinning. While you avoid your emotions, you will take actions out of harmony with love. Mm. That's a sin. Yeah, and I really love what you shared there about this, um, this forgiveness and repentance. It's, we spoke yesterday about these laws being the highest laws that we know of these laws of divine love and that they they require to engage them they require a use of our will uh, but a lot of people still think that's their force of will yes you know people that start when yeah. they hear this people start making lists of all the things they know they've done wrong it's not the things you know you've done wrong that are the main problem yeah <laughs> it's the things you don't know you've done wrong because you've yet to add an awakening to them. Yeah. That's what your problem is. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so this, this um, using our will in this way and then... Um, it's gone, Sorry. don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> it's gone. But yeah, using, <laughs> your, using your will oh, to, to engage an intellectual process is all about avoiding emotion. It's all about avoiding emotion. So... Engaging an intellectual process in order to resolve, in order to... So, so, for example, the average person, when they hear about the law of repentance and forgiveness, they go, OK, I'm going to repent for everything, right? But, but they've got no idea what they have to repent for yet because they think of a whole heap of things that they have yet to have an awakening for, they repent for. They start trying to repent for things they never even did. <laughs> and then they try to forgive other people for things that they never did. <laughs> and they try to overlook the things they actually did. Yeah. And they get themselves in this great big bother yeah. because they're not going through it emotionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I was going to say about the will-based process, going through it emotionally with our will. Mm -hmm. That What you've shared today about it being this, this process where we must continually engage our will to repent and then we discover more truth through that process and then we must just engage our will to forgive and then that opens us up to more repentance and forgiveness and repentance and forgiveness and it's kind of like when we step into engaging these higher laws the picture I receive from you when you speak about it is that that it's so much a will a loving will that we're engaging that we're not thinking about when's this over have I ticked that box it's it's a desire really to grow ourselves into a loving being closer to God and loving in the way that God loves that desire desire mm. is drawing us into this process where there's not really an end and a beginning for, uh, and for a long time because we're always and we're not really feeling um we do it until it's done yes we don't do it until we think it should be done yes and we don't do it until other people tell us it's done and we don't go i wish it was over and we don't do it until <laughs> we wish it was done yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do it until it's done yeah it's like a ball of string yeah if you could think of it that way somebody pulls on the end of the ball of string if you want the whole ball to be completely straight, yeah. you've got to pull the whole string off. Yeah. And, and unraveling the sin that you've created is almost like that. You grab it at the beginning mm -hmm. and you pull and there's more and there's more and there's more and there's more. And, and there's within more and there's more. that, you're and just... There's more that you didn't even know that wasn't, you couldn't even see before. And different colours come up and different shapes come up and different things come up. And there's still more and there's still more. And eventually you get to the point of realising, yet. Yeah, I've created a lot of sin yeah. <laughs> and it's a huge the problem. And, and then you get near the end and you start feeling you're near the end. Yeah. You do. Yeah. And you start feeling you're near the end because there's less and less compensatory effects happening in your life. You're happier. Mm -hmm. Your life's happier. Your life's easier. Mm -hmm. Things get easier. As you go on, it goes on further and further. You, more of your relationships have sincerity and love. And, mm -hmm. and so you feel the improvement in your life and then you know the burden of the sin is lessening. Yeah. That's when you feel it's gone. Going. Yeah, and of course, in that process, you've been forgiving also. You've been repenting, forgiving. It's essential repenting, that you forgive forgiving, because repenting, it, you can't forgiving. progress. Yeah. You can't yeah. keep unravelling the ball unless you unless do. Unless you do, yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. And in the end, you end up with your string fully out. It's all exposed. Yeah. 
all of the stuff you didn't know is now all exposed. You're fully aware. You're fully aware of everything you've ever done. Mm -hmm. and, and, but if you've done this with process with God, there's no longer any emotional signature to what you've done. Mm -hmm. There's no longer any emotional feeling about what you've done because God has exposed all of those emotions. It's a very emotional process. And you've gone through those emotions. You've received God's love. The causes have been removed. And you see it all. And you feel, you feel, you know, that it was terrible that you did those things, but you don't feel terrible personally. Mm -hmm. it's no, you now no longer personally feel bad because that's all been forgiven. You can yeah. feel the forgiveness. Yeah, mm. yeah, beautiful. So that's the process. And, and unless you engage that process, obviously the law of compensation is waiting for you to get even to the point of awakening. Mm. And, uh, and it will continue grinding its way on you <laughs> <laughs> until you reach that point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's that real shift of gears that that comes when you talk about these processes that I feel that the shift between in this grinding process where your will is not really engaged and it's a drudgery and drudgery and you know it you're feels not wanting to do it painful <laughs> yeah and then making this transition to really having a loving will engaged with these higher laws your whole perspective on everything changes your whole motivations your whole you don't have so much lack or goal orientated yeah, you, you, thinking you become less and less selfishly motivated yeah yeah less and less yeah like it's not it's not about it is you do desire happiness mm -hmm. But you desire happiness as much for others as you do for yourself. Yeah. You don't desire your own happiness over the happiness of others. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, you, and the closer you get to God, the less selfishly motivated you become. But ironically, you also become more happy. Yeah. 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 As a result. Yeah. Makes mm. sense. Mm. We have one final question. Sure. Okay. I know of some people who think that repentance or forgiveness can be a quick thing. <laughs> which is fitting. which is what we've been talking yeah, after about this. Yes. while they're not actually and they're not actually involving god or engaging a true forgiveness or repentance law mm. but they feel that they are and that they've <laughs> done all they need to do yes what's actually going on there and there's an example so yeah a daughter says that she's already forgiven her mother for treating her badly and says she's gone through the realizations of what went on in her childhood and she's forgiven her mum and she's fine and she's close to her mum now yeah, well, it's a mum who asked this question, is it? No. No. <laughs> no, it's, it's someone with a friend who says to them, you shouldn't get into this whole forgiveness, repentance thing. I've dealt with my stuff with my mum. I've forgiven her. It's all fine. And this person knows that, in actual fact, the person who's speaking to her hasn't right. done any emotional work uh, and certainly hasn't involved God in any process of forgiveness. Yeah, well, I would say this person has not had an awakening. Mm -hmm. They've not had an awakening to the sin of their own mother mm -hmm. and they've also not had an awakening to the fact of it being a sin and they've also not had an awakening to their own sin which is the fact that they're in denial yeah. of the truth which is a sin in itself. And, and this can happen even if they pay lip service to the fact that they're saying yeah mum was terrible when we were kids and it was horrible. But yeah they do this for the same reason of what we just discussed and this, and this is they want to be over it before it's begun. Yeah. And that this is a major problem. People always fool themselves about being over things when they haven't even begun things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a common thing. What can you do to help, I think, is the question. Well, it's really what's actually going on. Why does this person feel like they're all free of pain and suffering? And, uh, well, and one time after I'm going through dead, it. Yeah. And I've had a lot of pain and suffering before they die. They'll realise that they weren't free of pain and yeah. suffering. But, yeah. but what else is going to get them to what else is going to encourage that person to have an awakening to the fact that they're just fooling themselves which is a sin by the way mm -hmm. keeping yourself in a delusion is a sin mm -hmm. so from god's perspective this person is sinning even towards themselves but also towards every, even towards their mother they're sinning because they're thinking they're over something towards their mother that hasn't even begun yet right so that's a sin too mm -hmm. now what can you do to help them have the awakening well probably if you've said what you need to say about that and say no i don't believe that you have had this awakening and you will have to go through many emotions as a result of what your mother has done and um, in order to forgive her mm -hmm. and god will help you through the process or you'll have to do it by yourself one of the two 
and but you're fooling yourself and if you say all that to them and they say well no i don't agree with you say fair enough what else can you say <laughs> that the law of compensation will grind them down mm -hmm. until some point in their long-term future they will see that they actually they were just fooling themselves yeah that, yeah. that, that they fooled themselves because they wanted to avoid emotion, they wanted to avoid their experience with their mother, they wanted to avoid confrontation, they wanted to avoid anger. There's a lot of things they might want to, you know, what, what, there is a lot of motivations they might have had yeah. to avoid the situation, but they have avoided it. They'll get to a realisation themselves at some point. Right? When their own life turns terrible, when their own children turn against them, when they, you know, and all the other things, because any person who doesn't forgive another will take actions, like I've said, in their own selfishness, holding on to emotions of resentment and anger, they eventually harm others. Mm -hmm. And therefore they'll be, have to be on the receiving end of people's yeah. forgiveness. Yes. You know, they'll, yeah. they'll do things for which they need to repent. Yeah. And, and this is the problem is that a person who's in that kind of delusion, there's little you can do to help them, to be honest, aside from telling them the truth. Mm. God's laws are already grinding away at them. Tell them the truth of what's really happening. You know, you know, and when they get cancer, when they're 30, we say, well, that's part, and, and it's in their left breast, and we say, well, this must be to do with your mother. You, mm. you say you've dealt with your mum stuff, but cancer in your left breast means you haven't. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, then they, you know, get some kind of problems with their womb or something and there's another issue to do with your mother <laughs> yeah you know and when they have these physical issues on the left side of their body and they break their arm or they break their leg or they have an injury or they have some kind of sickness or disease related to the left side of their body now that's also to do with your mother mm. you know and just remind them mm. these are all the things telling you that you haven't dealt with your mother i once knew a guy who i told him he had a huge amount of anger and rage with his father he had ulcers all up his legs that were open and weeping constantly and he was in terrible pain he was in total denial to it. Eventually they became cancerous. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's happened to him now, but he's probably still in denial of the fact that it's about his anger with his dad. Yeah, yeah. He, he thinks he's a gentle person. He yeah. won't allow himself to feel angry. Yeah. And so, so his, uh, his body is telling him, no, you're angry, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his body is telling him the fact that it's, my, you know, left side legs as well, but, but sorry, right side mostly. Yeah. He, he know, you know, it's a dad, it's a dad and mum thing, you yeah. know. Yeah. And if it's both, then it's both. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and you can tell yourself a whole heap of lies and crap, but at the end of the day, your body is telling you the truth. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So don't skip over it. Don't ignore it. Yeah. If the only issue is that if it gets to the top point where your physical body is in pain and suffering, then it already means you're in a, lo a lot of emotional denial of pain and suffering. Yeah. So we need to acknowledge when we've got to the point of physical pain and suffering, we need to acknowledge, wow, I must be skipping over some pretty big things here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let, let yourself acknowledge that. Yeah. Let yourself work your way yeah. through what that might be. Of course, we're not going to um, bully people into, <laughs> into uh, seeing their, their issues, are we? we, we no. no. If you they can't. wish you to can't. remain in denial, you and, just have to say, and let's okay. look at God's love. God is a loving being. God does not bully us into recognising our sin. Yeah. God doesn't. God, God waits for us to be open to the concepts that God then tries to share. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, often people are going to have to be... Like, how much pain... The question I really have is, how much pain and suffering do you personally need before you're going to be aware that actually it's your sin that creates pain and suffering? Yeah. And how much pain and suffering collectively are we going to have to have on the planet mm -hmm. before we realise that it's because we have a whole heap of false beliefs about what we think is right that is causing our pain and suffering? Yeah. Well, how much has to occur? Well, obviously a lot, because there is an intense amount going on on the planet and an intense amount going on in most people's personal lives, and yet still there's no recognition or awareness or awakening to the sin. So this is the issue, like, this is why we have the problems we have. This is why God made the system like he did. Because, because we often are so arrogant and we lack so much humility that we're unable to hear God say anything about our sin. Mm. In fact, we've got to the point as humanity collectively that we don't even believe there's such a thing as sin. Yeah. We believe that it's just human nature. Yeah. We call it human nature. And that's how bad it's gotten. 
and, and this is what we need to repair. We need to see that there is such a thing as sin and that sin, missing the mark of love, always results in pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. It always results in chronic pain and suffering. <laughs> <laughs> and the pain and suffering that's occurring on the planet at the moment is intense. Yeah. So this obviously is an indication that collectively and individually we are in denial of a lot of sin and we're yet to have our awakening process begin. Yeah. And this is why it's such an important thing to begin. Mm -hmm. And if, we do, if you do want a relationship with God, my suggestion to you is begin the process as soon as possible. <laughs> Start the process as soon as possible. You, it will result in your own happiness initially, but it will also result in the happiness of people around you when they spend time with you and they feel things from you and so forth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So appreciate you talking about those things today. Yeah, thank you no, very much. No, it's been much. a great discussion, and yeah. hopefully we've answered some people's questions about yes. the law of compensation, the law of repentance, <laughs> the law of forgiveness, <laughs> using our will, prayer, how much God can help us, the yeah. reason why God's involved, and all of those kind of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I really try to get you to explain it lots of ways so that I, so that other people can benefit from yes. that. I really get to the root of what the person's asking because yes. I feel that's my job here yeah. Yeah, is yeah, to help clarify those things. Yes. So. so it's been a good discussion and uh, hopefully we'll have a lot more very pro productive discussions when we raise these issues of law and sin mm -hmm. and relationship with God, which, are, which, which is a large part of the assistance groups. Uh, during the assistance groups and the yeah. people who attend, I think, will enjoy those particular groups and the discussion of those particular things. Yeah, mm. yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs>